Well, in example B, we will we and send it uh, translated into uh, different uh, into two translations uh, separately. And put out the way we is translated is translated as a whole unit. So we will we send it in example in example in example B are not uh, correctable. In our training data, about 36,000 computers are not necessarily translated into target screens as a whole unit. So, we study the practical probability of the translation. Then, I will uh, briefly introduce our valuable term translation before introducing the term translation model. For valuable term translation, the valuable term instruction, we first uh, extract monolingual term terms from both sides of the uh, corpus and then combine them into a bilingual term bank. For monolingual term extraction, we use unsupervised method. On the one hand, we use a NC value method to extract the strict linguistic patterns like this, a million in uh, non phrases. And on the other hand, uh, we use a uh, uh, co co common coherence matter at the RRR metric to extract more flexible terms. Since, uh, since the, uh, these two methods uh, extract them in different settings, uh, they are complementary to each other. So we uh, combine the bilingual terms extracted by these two methods. And then construct a bilingual program with work alignment uh, to according to the alignment consistency. This is the example. In this sentence pair, uh, the blue part for new people and the class system uh, consistent uh, alignment consistent. So we add this to bilingual uh, bilingual term pair and into the bilingual program. And for the right part, they are now from alignment consistent. So we don't take this into the final program. Now uh, I will introduce the uh, translation models in this paper. Accordingly, we propose the three translation models, and they are distribution model, consistency model, and bracketing model. For term translation distribution model, the most straightforward way is to uh, distribute the term translations according to the According to the translation, conditional translation probability given domain information. Uh, for training data, uh, we use uh, RDA to compute document public distribution to represent the domain information. And we use this copy uh, condition, conditional probability, translation probability from the soft term to target term to model, to model this property. And uh, this, this is very, very easy table on um, lab training data. Now, how to compute this probability? Uh, we can use the uh, maximum value estimation with half of training data. And this is the uh, term distribution model. During, uh, during uh, decoding procedure, uh, we use this to represent the translation distribution. There is a sound sentence which contains uh, multi terms, uh, maybe D terms. So we can use this uh, compute the distribution score for this for each term condition on the document. And how to compute this? This is condition on document, not the copy. So we can use the uh, uh, below below formula. Uh, can, uh, there are two parts. The first part is the uh, uh, public condition, uh, condition of translation probability. And the second one is the document uh, public distribution. We can obtain the part uh, with RDA. Uh, we add this model into the, the nonlinear framework of machine translation as a feature. As a feature, we want to
terms of national consistency is to what you said, the term to be translated consistently uh, in the domain information where the first and it indicates the uh, translation identity that the software is translated into the same target term. And it was uh, if I'm uh, sorry, any mistakes in the uh, sorry. <coughs> uh, when translating a uh, software, if this translation of uh, consistency uh, consistency the stress is a high. The way we should translate it, translate uh, this software into the target terms uh, that are extracted from the training data. But uh, if the translation consistency score is low, we may translate it uh, into the, the target translation according to its concept that uh, follow uh, the traditional translation procedure. Also, we use RDA to build document public distribution. Uh, but first, uh, we group uh, the instructed bilingual terms uh, into this kind of two tables. G, here, and side E. Here means uh, the sound term, and side E means the uh, size of the translations of TI. And we design a uh, uh, copy condition the uh, translation consistency score. I will write it here that we give you this count here and K. Uh, how to compute this probability? Also, we use the maximum likelihood estimation with count from training data. Here, uh, we use I to represent the number of documents where TI occurs. And then I give the uh, unique, unique uh, number of translations of TI in document I. <coughs> and QI, Q, FN is the frequency of the translation of TI in the X document. Q is the non-monetary uh, uh, parameter. Uh, we can use this score to represent the stress of term translation consistency. Also, to below, also the, the upper formula is the term translation consistency model. There will be a sentence which contains multi terms. Uh, here we use P, I think P terms, or we compute its uh, term translation consistency score condition of document. Also, this block is con consists of two parts. The first one is the copy condition, the translation stress, stress, the consistency stress, we uh, saw in the last day. But the, and the second one is the uh, document copy distribution. We can organize with RDA. Also, we incorporate this model into the nonlinear framework of machine translation as a feature. The third one is bracketing model. Bracketing is the uh, is the uh, the <coughs> to what extent the software can be translated as a whole unit. Uh, if all software are translated into the target translation as a whole unit, we call this kind of term the writable one, and otherwise unwritable. Uh, we can use this strategy to extract the uh, training examples from the training data and the train classifier. And during the coding, uh, we can uh, predict uh, to predict the probability of a soft term to what extent it should be translated uh, as a writable one. At least, we use the contact features where soft term occurs. Oh, where, where Oh, for the features we use on the word and the, the okay. Uh, also, this is, uh, we can also uh, incorporate this model into the linear framework. Now we saw the experiments. This is the training site and the, the baseline system, parallel operating system. And this is the uh, some, some uh, cover processing tools and the evaluation. This is the result. Uh, we compile with two baselines. The first one is the traditional hierarchical response system, and the second one is the uh, color feature vector with uh, all the translation hypothesis with these bilingual terms. And uh, the, these two are the uh, distribution model and the consistency model. You can see that when we set the total number k to 1, 
Several minutes for que and, uh, questions or comments, and uh, if you have any, raise your hand and we'll pass this microphone. So I have, I have a couple of questions. So um, I think you have you show um, uh, you do some uh, term extraction and uh, using your pattern or something. Uh, do you have a measure of? of recall of precision and how that will affect your final translation quality? Uh, extraction, yeah, extraction, extraction <coughs> bilingual term and uh, whether, that, whether that performance may affect your final performance and uh, if you have some comment or... Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, we have some other experiments but not concluding this paper. Uh, actually, the number of uh, terms we tried, we, uh, we found that uh, if the number Flatter, uh, maybe the, the performance is higher, and some and that's, uh, we use some uh, some trick like uh, filter the uh, stop words and some 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 like this that is making a better result. Okay, great. And uh, any questions? So I have another one, actually. <laughs> so you have uh, some statistics about how your feature fired, right, in the, in the last table. The last table? last table, right. And the, how, yeah, yeah, the activation rate. And uh, it's not clear. It's not clear to me, but uh, did you really observe that what kind of terms are actually used in the final translation? Or uh, after, after you use different kind of feature, did you actually observe what terms are used and what terms are not used based on the uh, using yes, models? Because, because this, this models are also like uh, uh, as a feature. So uh, we use the count feature. For example, if we use the count feature and, uh, and this is the uh, log index model, we, we, can find, uh, we can see that uh, in the unmatched translation, because we start the uh, features of, of this atom. And we can see that if this feature is Zero of other oh, okay. So it's a kind of ratio of how many uh, how many terms are actually used or not. What kind of uh, okay? Okay. Okay. Great. Any comments or something? Okay. That's great. I thank our speaker. <laughs>